Hey everyone, ShinFZen here, your humble host as always, bringing you a brand new Let's Play. This time one of the great, fantastic, well-loved Super Nintendo games, playing Ogre Battle, The March of the Black Queen. Now this, here's a good one. And it's uh, it's it's a game that can be a little daunting for people that aren't familiar with uh, the Ogre Battle series, or um, you know don't like looking at a whole big bunch of stats right at the beginning of the game. But I'll explain it as we go. It's not nearly as bad as it looks. And we're gonna start a new game here, and this old-looking dude is the Wizard Warren. Great name. He's a great seer who can understand the destiny the stars have placed upon me. I appreciate that. He'll use the power of the tarot to Decide. I guess that's a lot like deciding whether or not you are, whether or not we are fit to become the leader. Oh, basically, to <laughs> to do very little justice to the story, this is the fifth story in the ogre battle timeline. Long story short, we're leading a rebellion against the oppressive empire. So, well, we're seeing if we're worthy to lead that rebellion. First, tell him our name. Well, that's easy. I'm gonna use this here fairy. I am Shin. Good old Super Nintendo games that only use lowercase. Yes. Gender. I am male. Last time I checked. Now this is kind of the really interesting part. If you know anything about uh, tarot cards here, we are dealing with uh, the major arcana, the cards that are, that, those are the cards that most people know of when, you know, they think of tarot cards, strength, fortune, the world, the devil, the star. It doesn't deal with the minor arcana, you know, the, you know, the four of swords, the three of cups. Um, it's all just uh, the major arcana here. Not only is it uh, used to determine our... Uh, beginning character and who accompanies us they're also used as items in game for various effects which is one of the reasons this game really drew me in as a kid because I've always been interested in uh, you know the tarot stuff but anyway we get a uh, selection of random questions here there are um, quite a number of them and you don't get all of them in one playthrough the selection is completely random so and depending on the type of answers you give will determine which of the four starting characters your lord is so let's go ahead and give an example here it's sometimes said that victory is only luck what do you think luck is luck is something you create luck is inescapable bad luck can be good well and I agree completely on this luck is something you create You are standing in front of a mirror which shows your best trait. What is shown in the mirror? Physical strength, mental strength, or moral strength? Uh, each time you uh, answer a question, it basically gives you points towards one of the four builds. There's basically a character where if you answer everything as morally upstanding and righteous as you can, then there's the uh, slightly better than... Uh, we'll call it average good. Then there's the slightly below average good, which is leaning towards bad. And then there's like the evil quote end quote class. I'm kind. I'm sticking for uh, one of the top two because they're the strongest. So I'm gonna go with moral strength, which is what I'd answer the question anyway. I'm not just you know <laughs> selecting the ones that give me the guy I want. What do you think is the best way to pull together and rule people with different hopes and ideals? I've never gotten this question before. Military force, religion, leadership, and charisma. Military force, uh, oppressing, oppressing people is never, you know, an option. Religion, that just leads to more trouble. So I'm going to go with leadership and charisma. The Hermit. After a difficult battle, the army elite was unfortunately defeated. What was the cause of your defeat? A lack of military strength, a lack of leadership, destiny. Now, here's... Uh, now, there's a great FAQ. There's some up on, like, GameFAQs.com, which will show you which exact build each of these choices will lead you to, but I'm going to kind of play it by ear here. 
Now, for me, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Destiny on this because I mean I I don't know I could take responsibility, but you know if you do everything you can and your men all follow your orders, I mean the only thing that you can really say that calls your defeat is Destiny. You've been commanded by your king to create a magic potion. What kind of potion do you create? Now this is this is an interesting question because it's like, well, what's the difference? I mean, none of these seem like a good choice. But um, I mean, a wealth potion that's obviously very greedy. Uh, poison, I am, imagine is the evil choice. Uh, don't quote me on that. But I mean, why would the king be like, make me a potion, and I try to poison him? So, an immortality potion so our glorious king may reign forever. Because of a mistake you made, your army is forced to retreat. What do you do? <laughs> Shrug your shoulders. I know, that's the right one. Retire from your post. Oh, this is an easy one. Lament your mistake. And finally, please choose a tarot card from the deck. Now, the answers I chose not only will decide my starting lord and who accompanies him, but I also start with the tarot cards that uh, I got as part of the questions in my inventory as well. Let's choose this one. Ah, the sun. <laughs> that could either be very good or very bad, depending on what my alignment turns out to be. Alright, so let's take a look at what we got. Wow, I got lots of hit points. Okay, so somehow I got... That is interesting. That is very interesting. I really confused the game. Poison and um, the Lord with Poison and Phantom, that's actually uh, the evil Lord, but my alignment is almost perfectly neutral. Now that is very interesting. Um, I guess I'll go over the stats here real quick. Very interesting. I've never seen this before. Obviously here's me, the Lord. Um, level 1, hit points 97, which is really high for a starting character. It's normally in the 80s. Uh, we have our usual RPG attributes. Uh, strength affects our physical attack and defense. Agility affects our ability to hit and our ability to dodge. Intelligence, our magic attack, magic defense, uh, hit rate and evasion. Uh, charisma and alignment are affected, like you raise them by lo by defeating enemies your level or higher, you lower them by kind of picking on weak guys. And luck is your usual general all around, it has tons of little influences and effects here and there, it can affect um, your what tarot cards you draw and stuff like that. It also affects some dodge and hit chances, it affects a little bit of everything. Now, what's interesting here is my alignment's 49, which alignment is on a um, 0 to 100 scale. Normally, when you end up with the Lord that has Poison and Phantom, your alignment's, like, under 30. Like, it's it assumes you're an evil character. Normally, when your alignment's, like, 49, you'll end up with, um one of the middle two Lords. Uh, one has Thunder... The other one has uh, Ianuki, which is a uh, physical attack from the back. Uh, when I did my test recording for this, for example, uh, I got the what's considered the second highest aligned lord, and his alignment was only 45. So the fact that I can end up with a higher aligned character who's um, two alignment spots lower is very interesting to me, and I've never actually played with this lord before, so... Uh, it's going to be interesting for all of us. And, um, well, I start with a wizard. Uh, if you get a really low in alignment, you'll usually start with um, a wizard. High alignments will usually start with clerics. Then in between, you usually have any kind of Valkyrie or beast men of some sort. Um, <clears throat> to go over real quick, uh, we already went over the stats. You'll see the cost, zero goth, cost 470, 120. That's how much it 
cost to send that unit out into battle. It's usually not a big deal. You usually have more than enough money, just something to keep your eye on so you like don't overspend at the shop. And we see how much XP they need to level up. And we see F and B, and it gives Poison 2 and Phantom 1. The way combat in the game works is each um, group gets to attack once, kind of like kind of like it is in Fire Emblem. If uh, my lord's in the front, for example, he gets to attack twice with Poison. If he's in the back, he gets to attack once with Phantom. The wizard hits physically twice in the front, which obviously you don't want because he's a wizard. <clears throat> but if he's in the back, he gets to attack twice with Magic. The interesting thing with magic is there are five spells that a wizard can have and depending on what enemy he's fighting uh... what they're weak against will change what um, magic he uses and then we have three fighters you always have three fighters um, to start off uh... with your lord's unit um, they are frontline units they get to attack twice in the front and only once from the back you can see at the bottom it says leader no, that means fighters can't be leaders, but a wizard can be because, you know, they're awesome. Basically, Amazons, which are the base female unit and fighters, can't be leaders. Uh, your leader, if they die, the unit gets uh, dispersed. If your lord dies, it's game over. And I think that's enough of the, enough of the basics there. Let's, um... This is gonna be really interesting. This is gonna be really interesting. I did not expect to get the low. He's not. I mean, he's not the. He's not bad, but I didn't expect to get the low alignment guy. It's kind of throwing me off. But here we have, you know, a few status. We can check what's going on with the group. We can remove characters from units, switch them around, formation, change units within, change um, specific uh, party members in units. Get rid of guys who no longer want. Upgrade classes when they become available. Switch the leaders for the group. And then use or equip items. We don't need to do any of that. We are gonna. Well, we're actually gonna call it. Um, I don't wanna overload everyone too much in the first videos here. So we're gonna head to the first battle in the next video now that we have the quick introduction stuff out of the way. So I will see you in part two when we take my apparently neutral, very low aligned guy into combat. This is gonna be very interesting. I will see you in part two. Thanks for checking out the first part and I'll see you next time.